Hello everyone. Welcome to Spotlight with Lisa tonight. I just want to remind you that if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you are interested in receiving the current annual catalog, I know it's backwards, that's a Facebook Live thing, or a copy of the current occasions catalog, or if you'd like a copy of the celebration brochure, I'd be happy to send those to you. Just leave me a comment and I'll be happy to send those out to you. I'm gonna start with a piece of Whisper White cardstock and I'm gonna begin by folding that in half. This is five and a half by eight and a half. I'm looking for my bone folder because it was buried underneath my little fancy light. I like that nice crisp edge on my cards when I create them. If you wear regular nail polish and you've ever gone along your card like this, you may leave a trail of color. And that's because of the enamel in your polish. But if you use the bone folder, it's going to eliminate that. I'm going to be using the stamp set tonight called Picture Perfect Party. And I know there's a little bit of glare. It's because of the lights in my stamp studio. This is a really fun stamp set. And spoiler alert, in April, this will be my studio stamps in the mail. And if you think you kind of like what I'm doing tonight, that's nothing compared to what's going to be happening in April with my studio stamps in the mail. It's just a great way for you to stamp with me from home with that program. This piece of paper is actually cut in odd size. Um, this is four by four and three quarters. So a lot smaller than what we're used to for doing a layer and I'm gonna show you why. I've got a multitude of ink pads here. I've got Melon Mambo. I'm just gonna make sure those are good and locked. I have a Lemon Lime Twist, which I swore I was gonna absolutely hate when it came out and boy was I wrong, I really like it. And I'm gonna use Bermuda Bay. So I've got three ink pads. I know they're like a little bit off camera, but I wanna make sure you can see my stamping. But you guys saw me, I opened them up here at the top. I've pulled out three of the stamps from that stamp set. There's one with polka dots, there is one with stripes, and there's one that's solid. Now you can do lots of fun things with these images. This is just one thing, obviously, that we're gonna be able to create. So I'm gonna start by using my polka dot image, and it's in a rectangle. Now I'm gonna go ahead and ink that up, and I am actually going to stamp that all the way down here at the bottom. I'm going to kind of let it hang off. And then I'm going to switch over now to that solid rectangle. And I'm using the Lemon Lime Twist. And I am actually going to go a little bit higher with this one. And I'm going to stamp it here. All right. And now I'm going to use the striped one. And that's the Bermuda Bay. And I'm going to stamp that here. I'm actually going to do this again. Kind of creating just kind of a border. There's really no rhyme or reason to this, so it doesn't have to go in any specific direction. And you're gonna see, ah, oh, look at that. Now, how did that happen? You know what, it only happens when you guys are here with me. Oh my gosh, you know what we're gonna do with that, right? We're gonna put a sequin over that when we're done. You know what, it just happens. It's just part of being a stamper, right? And I call that an opportunity to be creative. <laughs> All right, and then my last one here, I'm gonna squeeze that in. I'm just gonna kind of push these off to the side and I'm gonna bring in now the Daffodil Delight and I have got the flame. This is the top to the candle. I always say that mistakes are an opportunity to be creative. Who else is with me on that one, right? So I've got my flame here and then my flame here. I hope someone's laughing with me going, I do that too because heavens knows, I am so far from perfect, it's not even funny and then one here. So you know what? We're gonna just use an opportunity to embellish that the best we can. So we've got our little flames. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna move that piece of paper out of the way. I'm gonna be bringing in my Stampin' Trimmer. And if you don't have this product, I'm going to encourage you because this is absolutely amazing. There is a light blade, which is for scoring, that comes with it, and there is a dark blade, which is for cutting. I love that this cutting guide is clear so that when you slide your paper in, you can actually see where you're going, which is really nice. There's a protective coating over here, so you don't have to worry about these rubbing off over time. It also has an extension, which means it can go to a full 14 and a half inches. So boy, you can cut 12 by 12 paper really, really well. And I know there's a little bit of a glare, so bear with me. I'm actually gonna turn this, and I'm gonna use that cutting blade, that dark one, and I'm gonna line this up at the one inch mark. Now there's one and a quarter inches going this way, and of course the full ruler going this way. And I absolutely love this, because if I'm just doing a smidge, a small amount, it's easier for me to hold the bulk of my paper here and cut from this side than trying to go like this. 
So that's just a tip for you if you've got a trimmer. So I'm going to line it up at the one inch mark and I'm actually going to slice. All right. So I've got two pieces here and here. I am going to bring in the base of that card. I'm going to hold my cardstock here and here where it's eventually going to get mounted. All right, leaving a little bit of a white border around it. And I know those layers are probably a little bit difficult to see because it's white on white. But I've got my Happy Bic pencil. I love this mechanical pencil because I swear by the eraser on it. The lead is soft so it's easy to erase. So I've kind of got this lined up where I'm gonna want it and I'm holding it here. And then all I'm going to do is I'm gonna use that pencil and I'm gonna make a small tick mark here and a small tick mark here. And I know you're not gonna be able to see them because I left them really faint so that I can erase them. And then I'm gonna pull that off, set those off to the side. And again, I know it's gonna be difficult for you to see here, but I am gonna do some stamping in there. I'm bringing in my Memento ink. That's just my black ink of choice when I'm using photopolymer. And I'm using the same stamp set and this greeting says, happy birthday. You're gonna let that ink dry before you erase it, all right? And so just to kind of simulate, you're just gonna kind of erase it here and here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave this to the side. Now I'm gonna to go to this piece and I'm gonna flip it over. Using my snail adhesive, I'm gonna put a line of adhesive right here against the bottom. Now, I don't know about you, but do you ever get like adhesive on your sticky surfaces? That's where this silicone craft sheet is the absolute best thing. This thing, adhesive will not stick to it. You can go ahead and put it on there and it'll rub right off. So this is great for glue and it's great for your adhesive. So when you're doing something really close to the edge, this is a great product to use. I've cut myself a piece of window sheet. This is measuring two inches by four inches. And I'm gonna lay that here and I'm actually gonna work upside down. So let me move this now so you can see a little bit better. And I'm gonna line up the actual depth of my snail adhesive right along the edge of this window. All right, so far so good. Now we've got the bottom half of the candles. All right, I'm gonna flip this over and this time I'm gonna bring in my silicone craft sheet because I'm gonna lay it here at the top and I'm being really generous because I wanna make sure it sticks to that window sheet. And then here at the bottom, I'm gonna move that off to the side and I'm gonna lay this here and I'm gonna line it up across the bottom. Now again, I know this is difficult to see because that window sheet is clear. All right, now let me lift this. Let me rub from the back, so you know I've got ink all over my fingers already. Do you see here from the back, we've got several lines of adhesive holding on the window sheet, which is gonna leave this little peekaboo opening here. Watch what's gonna happen. Do you see how this is gonna go? And we're gonna fix that, and we're gonna do that together. Now I'm gonna give you a couple tips. If you don't own the foam adhesive strips, which I'm going to use, I really, really love them for this kind of thing. I want to create some elevation between these two panels so this will look like a 3D. So here's a tip for you. I know if you're a paper crafter, you probably have Stampin' Up! dimensionals. And you know that the ends are not die cut, so you get these nice little long strips. So you can go ahead and use those. But did you know, too, that the new mini dimensionals have a really thin thick wide border here. On my first card, my sample, I actually experimented. I took my scissors, and these are my sticky scissors. I keep these little ones with the red ribbon in my stamp studio so that I know I can use them on adhesive and not gunk up the good ones. And I actually just come up here and I just go ahead and I cut all the way up and I get nice little foam strips. And they're wide enough that I can actually get two, sometimes three, all the way around here. So this is just a tip for you in case you don't have these. But I will tell you, I don't waste anything on here anymore. I make sure that I go all the way around the edges. So I'm gonna pull off one of the foam adhesive strips. These are already um, pre-cut for you. I've got a small piece here that I had left over. I'm gonna move this to the side and I'm gonna show you how this is gonna work. You may think you have to do a lot of cutting with these, but you don't. Because they're easy to manipulate, I'm actually just going to curve it around the corner. That's what makes these so user-friendly. I also am gonna recommend that you don't get super close to the edge of the cardstock because if you do, it has a tendency to show because it's rather deep. So I just kind of go in just maybe about an eighth of an inch. So here's another strip. 
and I'm gonna come back around and I'm gonna flip and go around the corners here as well. And then I'm gonna finish here. Now this is where I'm gonna use my little sticky scissors, cut myself an end. Down here, same thing. I'm gonna go across and I'm gonna curve. We've got that little piece sticking here. We might as well use it, right? And I'm gonna come across here. I'm gonna pull off one more. I wanna make sure that this is balanced with those adhesive strips so that when it lays on my card, there's not gonna be high areas and low areas. It's all gonna be the same. And then here we are at the end. Now there's one more important spot I don't want you to miss. That's right here. Because can you imagine how this would sag, especially when it goes through the mail meter, if you don't have something there to support it? So I'm just gonna kinda go across the center just to give it a little bit of a brace. I like to save all those extras for another project. And then I'm gonna come in here. Now here's the best part. Here's like what I call the fun part. You just got one nice long strip and you just pull those straight off. I'm gonna do this one here at the top. So it's really pretty quick. Unlike having to cut up your dimensionals, I mean, this, this can be done in no time, all right? Especially if you're gonna be doing these in multitudes. So let's say you're making the same card a multitude of times. All right, here's that card base. Remember I stamped the happy birthday. Actually, let's go ahead and do this because some one of you is probably gonna get this card. All my customers receive a handmade thank you card in the mail from me when they place an order. So you never know who's gonna end up with this one. And then I'm gonna press, I'm gonna run from the back and I'm gonna burnish in those foam strips. I don't know, can you guys see the depth of this? So let's fix that boo-boo. The picture perfect party suite of products. That's really a tongue tie, let me show you here. It's here on page five of the Occasions catalog. These colors are actually very similar, if not identical to the Tutti Frutti suite. And these are the adhesive back sequins. Let's talk about the colors that are in here. There is a light color blue. I'm gonna call it a cross between pool party and soft sky, melon mambo. There is um, tangerine tango. And I'm gonna give you a little warning about these. These already have the glue dots on the back. So you wanna be really careful when you're shuffling with each other, like you don't pull them off, okay? And then I love these. Of course, there's that color I said I was gonna hate. That, lim that lemon lime twist, isn't that pretty? And then these are like an iridescent yellow. So they're kind of between a daffodil and a light green. Aren't they pretty? So let's play up my big oops here, all right? Let's take that green. Remember, they've got glue dots on the back. Watch what we're gonna do. Bing, we're gonna kinda hide that. Let's take one of these. That's the Melon Mambo. Let's make this look semi-purposeful. And let's go after one of these yellow ones. Let's see what we can do with this. Where should we put it? I'm gonna put it all the way up here to create a little bit of a balance. People ask me, how do you know where to put them? A triangle always works well, but not a perfect triangle. So try to keep them scattered. Obviously, these are a lot bigger than rhinestones or pearls, which are a lot easier to keep closer together because they're small. This is a simple card, definitely one you can make bunches of. Now, let me give you a couple ideas about this. Try other images, try trees and vines, large greetings with big, bold font that can easily be separated. Also think of big, bold flowers that can easily be separated as well. It's just something different. So that little piece of window sheet, which of course is easy to apply with the adhesive. You don't need any fancy adhesives at all. All the products can be purchased in my online store. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, would really love to earn your business. I also offer exclusive online ordering rewards. With a product order of $25 or more, I invite you to a live Facebook event called Live with Lisa. And it's in a closed private group. And there I do numerous live demonstrations and you get a whole bundle of tutorials. There's seven or eight of them every single month. Again, and keep in mind it's celebration and celebrations running through the end of March. Through March 31st, you can choose anything from the celebration brochure for absolutely free with a $50 order. And here's the best part. Part of my rewards program is that my customers also receive a free VIP gift. Actually, it was out on the 25th of every month, and there's a whole list of product gifts you can choose for absolutely free. That doesn't just happen during celebration. That's all year round. It's just a way of thanking my customers for their business. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day and have a wonderful week. I'll see you again soon.